In these next few tutorials, we're going to go over the recording and playback function of the TouchMix. If you're looking to capture some tracks and get a great finished recording, the TouchMix is an amazing tool. After you've recorded your tracks, you can either get a mix down on the TouchMix itself, or you can import those tracks into your favorite DAW for some more post-production. Before we get started, it's important to understand that the TouchMix is not a DAW. But on the flip side, your DAW is not a live sound mixer. Let's start with some basics. A TouchMix 16 can create up to 22 tracks of 32-bit wave audio files at a time. Now that's a whole lot of ones and zeros, so it requires a hard drive that's capable of reading and writing at a very fast rate. You'll need about 8 or 9 megabytes of storage for every minute of track. And we found that the best results come from a USB 3.0 drive that spins at 7200 RPM and uses an external power supply like this one. However, there are solid state drives without an external power supply that work great too. Check out the QC website for the most recent list of qualified hard drives. It's also possible to successfully use a USB thumb drive when recording a single stereo track. USB thumb drives come in thousands of models with varying levels of performance. If you're going to record with one, be sure to test it in a non-critical situation before recording anything that's important to you. Regardless of which hard drive or thumb drive you use, it will need to be formatted with the FAT32 file system. Here's a quick tip. We like to use a two-drive workflow. We have our archive drive and our show drive. The archive drive stores all of our sessions and has a much larger storage capacity than our show drive. The show drive goes with you to the show. It's always a good idea to format this guy before every performance. And afterwards, use your computer to transfer the recordings from the show drive to the archive drive. So let's get started by plugging the show drive into one of the TouchMix's USB ports. Like any USB device, it may take up to 10 to 15 seconds for the TouchMix to initialize the hard drive. You can access the TouchMix recording functions by pressing the Record Play button next to the touchscreen. You'll see your channel faders shrink to about half their normal height, and new controls appear at the bottom of the screen. To initiate a new recording session or recall an existing one, tap the New Recall button. This takes you to the recording setup screen. Any sessions already on your hard drive are listed in the USB Sessions window. If you want to work with one of these, simply select it and tap Recall Session. If you're starting a new session, tap the New Session button, give it a unique name, and press Enter. This is also where you'll select the Record Pickoff Point. For most cases, set this control to the Pre position. In this mode, your recorded tracks will be unaffected by any channel EQ, gating, or compression, so you'll have the freedom to adjust them later during the mixdown. Choosing Post EQ includes the results of all channel EQs and dynamics onto the recorded track. When you're done setting up your session, press the Record Play button again, and you'll see your session's name displayed here. Now that you're ready to record, you need to tell the mixer which tracks you want to capture. At the bottom of every channel are two controls, Track and Arm. When Track is activated, the multi-track recording from the hard drive becomes the source of the input channel overriding the channel's mic or line input. This will be useful in playback functions, which we'll cover in another video. To record a channel, you'll want to make sure that track is set to off, so you'll have access to the arm switch. Tap this switch for every channel you want to arm for recording. You'll also see the record indicator appear on all the armed channels. Then, tap the record button and start playing, because the TouchMix is recording. Here's a workflow tip, one thing that's very important. When you're done with your session, be sure to hit the stop button before you disconnect the hard drive or power down the mixer. When you hit the stop button, the TouchMix creates a project file for the session. Without that file, you can't recall your recording on the TouchMix or import it into a DAW. Basically, your recording is hosed. Now, so far, we've been telling you about multi-track recording, but what if you just want a stereo recording and you don't want to mix down tracks after the gig? Here's what you do. If you go to the Stereo In 2-Track Fader Bank, you'll see a channel called 2-Track Record. Here, you can record the main left and right mix. On the TouchMix 16, you also have the option of recording one of the stereo aux mixes. 
So why would you want to use the aux outputs instead of the main outputs? After all, it sounded good in the house, so the recording should sound good, right? Not necessarily. What? Say you've got this guitar player with a screaming 412 cabinet and a killer amp head. His stage volume is so high that you don't really need to put any guitar in the PA. On the other hand, the keyboard is plugged directly into the touch mix. Without the PA, the keyboard can't be heard at all. For the live sound mix, you would have little, if any, guitar in the PA, but the keyboard would be really loud. The live audience would hear a good balance, plenty of guitar on the stage, and plenty of keys in the PA. But a recording of the main output will have a lot of keyboard and not much guitar. Ironically, the instruments that are loudest on stage will be vastly underrepresented in the stereo mix. Here's what I'm telling you. A recording from the main stereo output of the touch mix is only going to sound like what you're sending to the PA, but it's not going to capture what your group sounds like in the room. With that in mind, you can choose to select the AUX 7 and 8 or AUX 9 and 10 as the source for your two-track recording. Then set up a mix on the corresponding AUX with the right blend of keyboards and monster guitar rig. You'll probably want to use a set of headphones when you're setting these aux levels so that you're not distracted by the PA levels. And there is another use for the stereo recording function. You could use it to make a mix down of the multi-track recording on the hard drive. Select track as a source for all the input channels and main as the source for your two-track record channel. Then arm the two-track channel to record. Listen to the main output and mix your tracks so they sound the way you like. Then set the play indicator to the song start and push the record button. The multi-track recording will play back and be mixed to a stereo track. So those are the basics for recording your gig. In the next tutorial, we'll show you what to do with your recordings after your gig. See you next time.